Do you want water? You thirsty? Not yet? Maybe later? Can you say roll the open? Roll the open. Well, I, was, I was talking to the chicken. Oh! <laughs> roll the open! Here we go. That's making a good day. Give it a tiger. Give it up for Debbie Gibson, everyone. Oh. 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 Yes! Oh. I'm going to start crying and laughing so hard. Oh. Ah. I did not do that. Now, here's Jason. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Jason Show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jason. Let me fix my tie here. Got to look nice. I have friends in the audience, for heaven's sake. But welcome to the show. Uh, you come on a good day. We have a lot of birds. Uh, we have uh, a favorite guest. And you've come on a day where, I mean, I know when you're watching our show, because we're, you know, we're a, a daytime show, you're probably doing laundry. You're not really watching. You're probably just listening to us. Today, I would ask that you watch, that you just actually keep watching, because it'll be interesting for a full 60 minutes, because... Our photographer, Eric, has been, he was actually the very first employee of The Jason Show. And how do I put this? He's interesting. Uh, he's, he's an interesting fella. Um, he's been all over the world. Uh, he gives me body pillows for Christmas shaped like bears. Um, he sleeps in an igloo in the winter, and I'm not joking on that one. So you never know quite what Eric is gonna say or do. So this morning, Executive producer Jeff gets a phone call. And that phone call, and again, I want to remind you, he's a photographer. <laughs> he gets a phone call, and the phone call goes something like this. Hi, Jeff. Um, I can still work today, but uh, uh, my cornea got scratched by an animal. <laughs> now, his cornea got scratched. Only Eric, in the middle between leaving work yesterday and work today could get his cornea scratched. So he still edited part of today's show. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if things are gonna be blurry, <laughs> if, they're gonna be, if they're gonna be edited properly. So keep watching because the show could go bl We're blurry right now. I mean. <laughs> Leo, can you fix that please? We're good now. Let's start the show. Leo, here we go. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Okay. I know. Uh, audience, say hi to my good friend. It's Kendall Mark over here. Hi. 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 How you doing, love? Don't worry. If anything's blurry, we'll just fix it in post-production. We'll fix it in post-production, like even though our show is live. Yeah, it's We'll fine. fix it later. Uh -huh. We do a But he is. Back me up. He's just an interesting cat. I mean, you just never know what's gonna come out of that man's mouth. Yeah, like he has a story for everything. Like everything. how he used to film penguins in Antarctica, or yeah. he worked on like a, a cannery in Alaska. The man has done everything. He's done everything and you just, I mean, he has, he went to like Costco and got like a human sized bag of nuts. And he mm -hmm. goes out to random parks to feed wildlife. Like uh, the on, big I mean, nuts. Just, anyway, so yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, I love him and he's dedicated. So mm -hmm. again, just keep an eye on today's show. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned just a few minutes ago in the monologue, uh, I've, I've been lucky the past th uh, few weeks, I've had guests, a lot of friends come to visit. And I have another uh, two friends come to visit, and I've referenced them before on the show. Uh, as most of you know, I, I love to go to uh, Disney World uh, a lot. It's my place. It's like a moment of zen for me. And, uh, and over the years, we've been going there for uh, 10, 11, 12 years, we've developed actual friendships with cast members there. Uh, and, and just coincidentally, and the audience doesn't really need to laugh at this, most of them are bartenders. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I didn't say it this time. Yeah. I didn't uh, say it. I thought I would make the joke before the staff yeah. makes the joke. That's, that's, that's how this goes. Anyway, there are some bartenders here today. Oh. Julie and Kelly right there. Now, I love those two. 
I love those two. I was recently asked, I was uh, being interviewed actually <laughs> yesterday uh, for the start. Kelly's like, okay, get, get the camera off me. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but those two mean the world to me because, uh, and I mean this, I'm not being overly dramatic. I was being interviewed yesterday, and, and I don't know if he asked, like, what the interviewer said about happiness. And I go, let me tell you, um, top 10 moments of happiness in my life. And I mean this. Uh, I'm a creature of habit. I do the same things all the time, and I do Disney the same way. Every time we go, if we do a short weekend, the first place we go is Disney's Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. And as I'm walking into the park, you should see me. I look like a 12-year-old, like a slash like in a senior citizen mall walker because I'm going like this. <laughs> and I'm walking straight to the tune-in lounge where Julie works. Uh, and I can't wait to see her. So I walk, I'm like a little mall walker and I'm just bursting with anticipation. And I walk into the bar and when Julie spots me in the line, this is what she does. The boys are here! And it's just, yeah. It's the best, one of the best moments of my life. And then go see Kelly at, what, it's Sunshine? Sunshine Day Bar. Sunshine Day Bar at Hollywood Studios. They're the best that Disney has, and they're right there, and I love them. Go see them. Let's get started, everybody. Time for the hot dish. Roll it, everybody. Here we go. Roll it, Leo. Woo! The fifth season of Stranger Things may be on hold thanks to, you know, hello, the writer's strike, but that doesn't mean we have to wait too long for some new content. What do I mean? Well, here's the deal. The franchise has dropped a teaser for a stage adaptation of the show. Look at this. As you saw there, the stage version will take us to the beginning of the story, but they say that it's gonna give us clues about what's gonna come next in the final season. The bad news is the play is set to debut in London, so we gotta get our, you know, get a passport and fly to London uh, in, Nove in, in November. Hmm. I know, why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they debut it here, like off-Broadway uh -huh. or like Broadway does in Chicago, do a test run? The Lion King, for instance, was tested right here before it went to Broadway in We're probably open. We're I mean, open. I, I, they could tell here in Minneapolis. We uh -huh. have a very, Chicago, Seattle. We have great audiences. Mm -hmm. Why London? I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, it's cool though, don't you think? To fill in yes. gaps in different media. Yes, and I like the idea that we're going to see, it's the late 1950s, so we're gonna see Joyce and Bob and Hopper when they were in high school. And oh. depending on where you're at, I won't give anything away, but you'll either see a new character or you'll see a very familiar face, a younger version of them. Oh. Which I know sounds convoluted, but I don't wanna give anything no, away no, no, in no, the no. story. Because part of the fun of that show mm -hmm. is it unraveling in front of you. Yeah, so it's the 1950s instead of the 80s. Okay, yes. I like that. I, well, Star Wars does that with comic books. They right. fill in the gaps. In, in, in comic books. Well, a lot of Star Trek does that too. Next in the dish, could Tom Cruise strike again for the second summer in a row? Yup. Reviews are pouring in for Mission Impossible 7, but before uh, we tell you how good they are, here's just in case you're one of the four people that haven't seen anything from this movie, here's a little bit of the trailer. The world is changing. Truth is vanishing. War is coming. It's been a long time, friend. You've no idea the power I represent. It knows your story and how it ends. Listen to me. The world's coming after you. His fate is written. Shall we write yours, too? If anything happens to them, there's no place that I won't go to kill you. That 
It's written down. Mission Impossible. Dead Reckoning, Dead Reckoning Part 1. They're Harry Pottering this. Uh, <laughs> hits theaters next week. They're dividing it into, into two. Fine. Don't know if that's necessary, but the early reviews are coming in and it points to another huge summer for Mr. Cruz. The New York Post called it, look at this, summer's best movie. Mm -hmm. Screen Rant called it, and, and Screen Rant isn't happy with anything. Uh, Screen Rant called it a near perfect summer blockbuster. Wow. And Collider says, Tom soars, but the women fly even higher. Oh. Yeah. As it should be, damn it. <laughs> Uh, but then said the movie shows why Mission Impossible may be the greatest action series ever. Wow. Well, Whoa. seven movies. There's only a few minor, or not bombs. None of them bomb, but not mm -hmm. all of them were as huge. But it is a. It's been going since 1996. Mm -hmm. Mission Impossible, the franchise, since the 60s. So it's been around. I mean, right. the theme, everything. Yeah. The Brits are going to be real mad because that means they think it's better than James Bond. Just saying. No, they're fine. They have enough characters. Give us, give us <laughs> Ethan. Yeah. Team America. Now watch. We're gonna find out that a Brit was the the creator of uh, Mission Impossible. <laughs> I doubt it. Because you know it was a TV, you knew it was a TV series. I first. didn't know that. Yeah, it's a that. TV series first with that legendary theme song and the wick uh, that burned. It was uh, one of the best theme songs ever. We have a lot more to come. Go get some more Sanka. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. <laughs> Coming up, you know, other talk shows are in reruns all summer. Not us. We're here all uh, July. And thank you. Um, I'm taking a few weeks off in August, but uh, coming up, we just uh, kind of settled things, so I can't wait. Uh, we still have about five or six more stories coming your way from, from our road trip to Chicago. And I'm just going to briefly tease you on one because I think, I don't want to oversell it, but I think mm -hmm. it's going to be our fa my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, executive producer Jeff and I are the, about the same age. We grew up on talk shows. I grew up in Chicagoland, so I watched the Oprah Winfrey show before it was the Oprah Winfrey show. I watched it when it was called AM Chicago. Any hoodly, I'm also a nerd, a TV nerd. What? And I, and I, I know. <laughs> and, uh, and, I love, and I love theme songs. That's the best part about having this show is having your own theme. Anyway. I didn't have any friends young when I was young, so all I did was listen to theme songs. I know the words to every version of every Oprah Winfrey Show theme song, and so does Jeff. And as we're pulling into Chicago, uh, photographer Eric was horrified because I put on my Oprah theme playlist. Oh, God. And we, it's real. I can show you my phone. And Jeff and I proceeded to, with, to memory to sing every version by memory in the car. It was our Oprah pool karaoke that you'll see uh, probably next week. So yeah, it's, it's absolutely horrifying. Mm -hmm. And it, it, is, it is a top five reason Jeff is still single and I didn't get married until 40, mm -hmm. yeah. Was this before or after you played all of the Dallas theme songs and sang them in the correct order as well? Welcome back. Last week. <laughs> last week, we told you about SJP's interview with uh, Howard Stern. Howard asked her about the start of Sex and the City and why she wanted her character, Carrie, to stay away from the most risque scenes. Listen to this back and forth. It's interesting. And the only thing I said to him that I was concerned about was that I just didn't feel comfortable doing nudity and... I suspected that if it wasn't in the pilot, it would be part of a series, that it felt like it was legitimately going to be talked about. And he said, don't do it then. I don't care. Don't do nudity. He said, we'll have other actors. If they feel comfortable doing it, they'll do it. But you do not have to. And I was like... Were you not comfortable with nudity because of your body image? Or were you not comfortable with nudity because you think it would make you in a different category of actress? Um, I think I was just shy i think i just yeah. never felt 
comfortable um, exposing myself that way. And I never had any judgments about anybody else doing it. It wasn't like a morality thing or if somebody else felt comfortable doing it, I kind of, I I was admiring of them. Um, But I just never felt comfortable being nude. I didn't think it would change perception of me or kind of like create opportunities that I might not be interested in. I just didn't, I was shy. You, I mean, of course. Cynthia Nixon, on the other hand, couldn't care less. If you watch episode one of And Just Like That, oh, and just like that, boobs. Yeah, it was like, hey. (laughs) hey. (laughs) Our hot dish continues now with our insider to the stars. Please welcome back to the show from the Hollywood Raw podcast, donning a hat, it's Dax Holt. (laughs) Hi, buddy. Hello, Jason. Good morning. How is everyone? How was, uh, how was your 4th of July weekend with your family? It was great, very relaxing, had fun, just hung out by the pool, didn't really do too much. It was perfect. Perfect. Uh, who'd you guys have on the podcast this week? So we ha- I want to talk about, so we had Yuri, which is a street photographer. We had him on this week. He was awesome. Uh, but I wanted to bring up an episode, since I wasn't here last week to tell you about, which we did this episode about like random Hollywood facts that we didn't even know about ourselves. We started exploring I think you're going to like this episode. Uh, so if you want to go back and listen to it, like how much people pay to get their star on the Walk of Fame. A lot of people think that, oh, they're, they're given to them, that it's an honor that they, you know, get this star. That's not the case. You have to pay to have your, your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. A lot of times the movie companies will be the ones that will like foot the bill so that they can get promotion for their their, their current project. But it's... I, it used to be like $20,000. Now it's like $75,000 to get a star on the Walk of Fame because it has all the maintenance and the, the whole festivities around it. You know, you, the star has to be there in person themselves to actually receive it unless they've passed away. But like, there's a lot of rules and regulations to get those stars, which I thought was really interesting. I, I, look, I, I get them doing it. I always thought that took away from a little bit of the prestige of getting one. You know what I mean? The fact that you mm-hmm. can just buy it. Yeah, well, you, you could buy it, but they also have to vote you in. So that's one oh, other okay. fact. You can't just like, hey, here's seventy five thousand dollars, and you're random Joe Schmo. There is a, a list, and they everyone want to say it was like every June they they have a a list of people that they're going to nominate and then accept that gets a star that year. So there is an exception process there. And then the other thing we got into were re- people's real birth names. And some of the people I thought their their name that we know them as right now is their real name. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out a couple for you okay. to see if you know who's their name. Audrey Perry. Do you know whose birth name that is? Audrey Perry. Yep. Um. Uh. Let's see here. Uh. I'll just throw out a guess. A Fair Fawcett. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Faith Faith Hill. I really? thought that, that was her birth name. I thought Faith Hill was her name. And no, Audrey Perry's her real name. How about this one? Uh, let's go with Emily Jean Stone. Emily Jean Stone. Uh, she likes a three-namer, so let's go with Emma Stone. Yes, Emma Stone is right. I, I okay. was trying to give you an easy one there. Let's go with Stevland Hardaway Judkins. <laughs> Photographer Eric. No, uh, let me see. Um, <laughs> let's see. Ray, say it again, Dax. Uh, Stevlin Hart. Stevlin. Um, <laughs> I don't even have. I don't have a clue, Dax. Tell me. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh. Oh. oh we- no, we're not going to know who Stevlin is. <laughs> okay. Thank you, buddy. We're having technicals. You can watch. Oh, I'm oh, back. There we go. I don't know what happened. I lost audio there it's for all right. a second. But it was Stevie Wonder. Oh. I did not know that. Stevlin. Well, before you freeze again in a cute little pose, <laughs> we'll say goodbye. <laughs> Bye, Dax. You can Bye. find the Hollywood Raw podcast wherever you get your podcast. Stevie Wonder. Stevelin. Stevelin. That is, that's a, that's a nice, that's a regal name. It's very regal. Well, my husband, uh, they named him, he has a very long name because my father-in-law wanted him to be president. Uh, <laughs> this is for real. There's still time, Carl. But, it, but his full name is uh, Collinsworth 
Nelson Haas Matheson. But Collinsworth tried, oh God, you should see like on his driver's license, it goes all the way across. It's like, <laughs> it's like six point font all the way across. <laughs> fantastic next in the dish oh this is so funny you're gonna love this i watched the whole thing in the dressing room harrison ford was a guest on conan o'brien's uh fantastic podcast this week the two are always always snarky with each other youtube harrison's appearances on late night anyway and they got into it jokingly over harrison's father's ancestry look of course my you're... father is was uh uh irish irish right okay no German. No German. No. Okay, I refer you to this piece My of mother, paper right here that says, born and raised in Chicago to an Irish slash German father. Well, that's, if that's a quality of your research. <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine it is because right there it says Harrison Ford, and then you had to write down Han Solo. Yeah, I did. You can't <laughs> remember that? No, yeah. I can't. I can't remember Han Solo. Are you wrote, serious? Yeah, I wrote down because I heard that you were in some of the Star Wars films. And this was news to me because I've seen those films and I don't exactly think you pop. Well, you... I didn't recognize, I'm sorry. Whoa. But I mean, I remember Chewbacca. I remember uh, the bad guy with the black helmet. Uh -huh. And then uh, there's some people. How come you're not still on television? <laughs> 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 I know, look, Harrison has a reputation within entertainment journalist circles of being a grump. Mm -hmm. um, he is, but it's part of the charm. I've interviewed him a couple of, you, that's what you got to, you got to go in with it. It, it. He is grumpy, but it's hysterical. That's, he's just has a dry sense of humor. That whole interview is fantastic. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen it or watched it or listened to it or however you he can just like it. chews him up and spits him back out. Well, and he, <laughs> and like I said, go Google on the, on uh, YouTube, put in Conan O'Brien, Harrison Ford late night when Conan had late night with Conan O'Brien. Every appearance with Harrison is just a piece of great late night. Next on the dish, you probably never saw the news uh, the earlier this week. ESPN laid off a bunch of high profile on air folks as a cost cutting measure. Well, the network's highest paid person, Stephen A. Smith, addressed these moves uh, this week. Listen. But if we're going to be real about it, let's deal with reality. This ain't the end. More is coming. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I could be next. And the one thing that I can tell you about Stephen A, this ain't 2009. I really didn't see it coming. My eyes are always wide open now. I'm never comfortable. I never take anything for granted and I never assume that I'm safe. And first takes number one and been number one for 11 and a half plus years. It is. <laughs> Steven's right. He's, a, he's invaluable to the organization. But I, gotta, I love Steven. I was just listening to his interview with uh, Stern, which is just so such a great conversation. However, I was scared. I, at first, I thought he was uh, announcing that aliens were here. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was very serious <laughs> yes. that the close encounter of all three kinds had happened. Mm -hmm. He was very serious. Anyway, so here's the deal. Steven makes $8 million a year, but incoming, and I'm, I'm mentioning his salary for this reason, incoming personality Pat McAfee is set to earn $17 million a year. And listen to what, I mean, Steven's show and Steven as we say in this, he's the big head on the billboard for ESPN. That's how, you know, when you're the jewel there. ESPN is, uh, is one of the biggest casualties in a new area, uh, a new era of cord cutting. And they're one of the biggest cuts that my friend uh, Bob Iger, mm -hmm. uh, Disney wide, ESPN has taken quite a few cuts. Mm -hmm. What you're connected more to the sports world than I am. What's the scuttlebutt about McAfee? coming in and all of these veterans of ESPN getting cut. Well, there hasn't been much about that necessarily. I think everybody that did get cut, at least those who have said something, have gone, oh my gosh, I've been here for 26, 30 years, and it's crazy to me that I'm out, but that's the industry that we're in. I mean, big, big names too. So it's, it's a... 
It is. It's it sensitive. Looks, and we got to go, but it is it is the rough side of this business. And, he, you know, Steve was talking about real talk. Here's the real talk. I, I have friends. I know of anchors, new, local news anchors, who they've been around for 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. Their salaries go up every contract. So when the big corporate guys and women in New York and Los Angeles are looking to cut, who they are the fattest piece of meat there. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, oh, that anchor makes $400,000. Clip, we can get a 22-year-old in here for 32,000 and that's rough, but that's that's the business. That's that is reality as Stephen would say. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this back in a moment. Today's show is for the birds. I mean it. Just when you thought you'd seen everything, don't miss my attempts to chicken sit a pet chicken. Let's just say I have found my new calling. And the bird brain fun isn't done right there. You know Christopher Straub is a fashion designer, but did you know he also has pet ducks? He joins us to talk about raising his fine feathered friends. Sit back, relax, and see what happens next with the Jason Show continues. Welcome back. Well, over the years, I've had the chance to babysit kids. You saw me struggle keeping uh, uh, them under control. Maybe if you saw the rerun of the, the best of show last week. So imagine what happens when I had to babysit a chicken. <laughs> yep. Recently, I took care of a coworker's pet chicken. And uh, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. It's our latest fish out of water. Like, what is going on? I just figured that Jason should probably, before I'm allowed, like he's allowed to touch my child, I should probably see if he can babysit an animal. So I thought, why not get a chicken here? I got white. Does her, do her dump smell? Yeah. I don't know if I want to be here. How often does she take dumps? A lot. What, what is her bowel schedule? <laughs> her bowel schedule is constant. Just, just like a baby. Oh, it's just a chicken, Leo. When I touch. She's melting to your What the hell is that? Hi, Jason. Okay. It's your new sidekick. Kendall's been replaced. Oh, God, it's creepy. Is she extra crispy or original recipe? <laughs> oh, my God. She just... Literally, she won't just. Even. What? And she's aiming now for my water. That's not yours. It's hers. Don't worry. Oh, that's her it's water. Water. Yeah, I put it. I put it in her mud for her. <laughs> you know, that's part of your job. Yeah. Uh uh. You're babysitting. Okay. <sighs> Don't touch the Louie. You're gonna sit that close? That's pretty good. Okay. Hello. Hello. Oh, there's chicken poop residue still on the. It's all right. <laughs> Come on, guys, you gotta be by the microphone. I'm not getting closer. No. She's very friendly. No. She is. We're the ones sitting by her. I'm a city kid from the you smallest town in America. No, no pun intended. No pun intended. We okay. will sit by her. <laughs> is anyone offended that Leo? is more warm toward the chicken than he's been to us in eight seasons. You should have had a real snack Are you actually surprised? So after that, then you can take her on a walk. Do you want to come into the changing room with you? No, I'm just <laughs> Audience, I'm sorry, usually during the commercial breaks, I would spend time with you, but I gotta take care of my chicken. I'm not giving the whole thing, just oh, throw it down there? Well, there's already pieces on the floor. Okay, this is like a baby. You can't just feed him the whole thing. You gotta give her a little bit. There we go, chicken. That was a huge piece. Doris is having trouble eating that piece. I've been watching yes, this please. bird for literally a minute and I've already almost choked the chicken. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doris, I gotta go back to doing the show now. Okay, so. 
you signed me up for this. Mm-hmm. I've been watching the chicken, mm-hmm. Doris. Doris, yeah. I've been watching Doris all morning. She's a good hen. She's We're getting ready to do the final thing, which is walk the chicken outside. Yeah, Because you would nap. have to walk your baby. Yeah, you have to kind of lull them to nap. So we're going to walk the, her a little bit, and then she's going to nap. Because with a baby, the whole goal of parenting is to wear them out, right? So they yes. sleep. Yes, yes. Okay, now what do I do? I Come here. Here. Come here, okay, now. Okay, that's a leash. But she loves grass. <laughs> okay, come on. Because, uh, you know, with dogs, you go, come here, chicken. Come here, chicken. Tell her a bedtime story. Once upon a time. There is a sidekick named Kendall who signed Jason up for really ridiculous things, like walking a chicken. And one day after that chicken was walked, Kendall lost her job. The end. Wasn't that a beautiful story, chicken? Kendall's getting me ready to be a father because she's pregnant, you know. So I got to take care of the chicken all morning. Do you see freedom? It's like free willy. Can you jump over the fence like Free Willy? I'm hearing that Michael Jackson song in my head, waiting for her to leap over the fence. Hold me like the River Jordan, and then I will say to thee, you are my friend. Carry me like you were my hand. <laughs> Remember what I told you at the beginning of the show? Guess who edited that? <laughs> Eric. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's uh-huh. Eric. Yep, there it is. That's Eric. Doris is alive and well, by the way. Yeah, by the way, Doris is fine. Her mom was there the whole time. The whole time supervising. As they say at the, in the credits of movies, no chickens were harmed in the making of this story. That's no. right. Well, our bird fun isn't done when we come back. <laughs> Did I just say that? Yeah. Our bird fun. When we come back, uh, he's a fashion designer, a children's book author, and a duck dad. Christopher Straub is here when we return. Back in a moment. Project Duckway. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Well. Our next guest has all of his ducks in a row, and uh, <laughs> the writing is real good today, I'm telling you, uh, and is here to show you how you can do that too. What do I mean? He'll explain. Give it up for Project Runway vet, children's author, bingo caller, and duck raiser, Christopher Straub. Good morning. This is, this is, is turning out to be the most country episode you've ever done. This is fantastic. I just got to ask you, for uh, <laughs> because especially new people in Chicago, they probably recognize you from Project Runway. Yeah, how, did, how did this happen? How did this happen? Because, I mean, you know, when, when I met you, you were a little cosmopolitan youngin, mm-hmm. city boy, mm-hmm. and now you're raising ducks. I live in you the country. You have whatever the hell this is. I live in the, uh, you know live I mean? in the woods. You live in the ducks. woods. Uh, no, but seriously. I follow you on Instagram, and I, I started to notice years ago you were taking more pictures of ducks than people in your than, life. Than fashion, than, yeah. my, than my kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, yeah uh, definitely. But yeah, how did this happen? Well, it really was uh, that, uh, picture it. Yeah. <laughs> 2016. Uh, I went with my husband. We, went, we decided that we were going to be chicken gays. Okay, we were going to raise the chickens. I, I, I don't think the general public knows okay, what all that right, is. Right. We were, we're, we're going we're gonna to raise chickens and harvest eggs. We have four acres in the country, so we just thought now is the time. <laughs> You're going to be poultry gays. Poultry yeah, gays. Yeah. And so we went to buy chicken. Uh, we went to the farm supply place, as you do. As, you, as one does. As one does. And, um, and then I just saw the ducklings, and I said, oh, no. They're too cute. I can't leave without these ducklings. So with some quick research, we realize that it's uh, very similar. Uh, the amount of eggs that you will be receiving, the amount of care that you have to provide to them, it's a little bit different, but we ended up buying ducks. Was While you were researching, was Ronnie uh, calling an attorney? <laughs> <laughs> or was he dividing <laughs> assets? 
house. <laughs> yeah. Was no. There, okay, you no. get the house, I get the car. He was all in. He was all in? Yeah, because he's from Iowa and lives in the country yeah. and stuff. So this was more him. So Okay, who are we looking at here? So this is some of my ducks. Um, all of these photos are taken by award-winning nature photographer Christopher Straub. That's right. <laughs> Oh, okay, but let me compliment you. We've had some fun, but let me let me compliment you, my friend. Your photography, it's really it really is beautiful. Your Instagram account is quite lovely. It's look it's, at those yeah. babies. Yes. I can't get enough of a baby. Like I love hatching eggs and, and some of them um, the the mothers brood the eggs, which means they incubate them. It's not incubated inside. I'll I'll go into yeah. that in a little bit later. How many chickens do you have now? So okay, chicken. We do have chickens as well. So we have Oh um, ducks. I mean, so yeah, I'm sorry, a, I'm getting all my birds mixed up. We have a a, a, a couple chickens. We have a couple geese and several mini ducks. Mini ducks? Is that like mini watermelons? Or well, what you're we only allowed to have a certain amount of poultry in our um, township. Oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to out myself. I, oh, you're hoping that no one at the township is watching. <laughs> Illegal ducks! <laughs> no. Like two or three. It's fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're, you're famous. It's fine. Okay. Now, should we take a break, Jeff? And come? Okay, when we come back, you mentioned, because uh, I want to know, the audience, we want to know what that what is. What is this? I want to know why this egg is so big. We got lots of questions, we and I'm answering those questions. When we return, back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> oh, God. Read of the teleprompter says. We're back with quack expert Christopher oh. Straub. <laughs> That's literally what the teleprompter says. Okay, let's get down to business. All right, I know. Well, what I know. are we doing here? All right, so uh, so the big question that I get the most often is, do they lay eggs and can you eat them? And so that was the purpose of us getting uh, ducks to begin with for laying eggs. So I'm going to show you sort of a side by side comparison of some similar eggs. Okay. So, so right uh, right here, this is the, your standard egg that you're going to get at Cub Foods uh, yes, or Jewel exactly. Osco. Yeah. And then um, just a a little bit bigger is going to be the duck egg. Just by comparison, here is uh, one of our, our chicken eggs. Okay. But then I have to show you this monster. This is a goose Pterodactyl? egg. Yeah, this what is that? Goose egg. So this is the equivalent of two to two and a half eggs if you're actually like cooking with it, which I do. You cook with that? Yes, but I want I want you to do some. I'm gonna you're gonna um, you're gonna show me your egg cracking skills, Mr. Biscuit. Oh yeah. I all right, so so let's so do this one first. So this is going to be your standard egg from uh, from the grocery store. Okay, so kind of a there you go, perfect. I mean, ladies no, and gentlemen, no. I, I do make biscuits too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I you know. You just put that off to the side. Okay, so um, I'm gonna try to hold this up a little bit, so you can see the egg is a little more pale yellow. Yeah. Uh, in that one, and you can tell. I mean, obviously you're familiar with the, the cracking the yeah, shell. Yeah, crack. Yeah. So now do this. So much stronger. Oh god. Yeah, I know. It's like you're, it's it's almost painful. <laughs> oh. And so, so that. Uh, the yolk is it's very vibrant. Yes, it's much oranger, but also these are free range ducks that we have. So throughout the day, they wander around eating uh, plants, vegetation, bugs, anything, nutrient rich stuff. Okay. And then just for fun, <laughs> do, do, do the, the goose egg. <laughs> Crack it? Crack it and empty it in there. Do you have a hammer? <laughs> I want... Oh, criminy uh -huh. niddles. Uh-huh. No, you can keep going. You're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna cut your fingers if you don't keep it. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Oh my gosh. So not only is the shell very hard, very hard, but yeah. also the, the yolk is it's ginormous. Yeah, it's gigantic. And you were telling a producer in the break, yep. you can make two breakfast sandwiches with one egg. I did, just last egg. weekend. Just last weekend, I, I made two breakfast sandwiches with just one, one uh, egg. No, I'm not being goofy. Flavor profile, 
Uh, is it a richer flavor? Richer flavor. A lot, you know, you could tell by the large yolk yeah. in in both of them that it's, it's a lot richer. It's actually um, duck eggs and goose eggs are alkaline producing foods, so they have health benefits beyond just protein and all oh, that stuff nice. as well. And oh. chicken eggs are acidic. Now, what is this? All right, so uh, people want to know if you can hatch the eggs. And so I'm going to uh, show you one way of hatching it. One way is just leaving it uh, with the duck. She can sit on it for 28 days. Or you can incubate with a, a little tabletop incubator here and you basically put it in keep it hydrated and it rotates the eggs periodically through the day and you can monitor the the production of the eggs you go ahead and hand me one of those it's eggs. like jurassic park it is you it's know exactly. it's like that yeah hand me yeah. one of those eggs right Wait, there. one of these just anyone. any one any of them okay and then uh, through a process called candling you can actually light up the egg and monitor the growth of the embryo and i have videos of this on my instagram as well so follow me if you want to know more about ducks follow me at Schmistifer on Instagram. Can I borrow this later? <laughs> I love you. I love you. Mm -hmm. I do! Mm -hmm. Give it up for Christopher, everybody. <laughs> Follow him on social media. And if it, what? We still have time? Oh, we don't have to say goodbye. You wrapped me before I needed to Who be wrapped. wrapped. I didn't wrap you. <laughs> Uh, do you have, no, uh, more shameless plug. Oh, yes. Uh, tell folks about down here, oh, especially because yes. this is your first time in Chicagoland. So hey, welcome right. to yeah. Chicagoland. Yeah. So I have um, I have kids as well, and they actually helped design these uh, little duck pins because we raise ducks. They love ducks. They, um, they definitely have a hand in taking care of them. So if you go to my website, ChristopherStraub.com, you can actually get uh, little duck pins that they've designed, and the money from those benefits their college savings account. So please... <laughs> Help me, help me pay this, for my kid's college. This, this, can I tell you, we got 20 seconds. Here's what I, well, I have a list of things I love about you, but other guests will come on here with their stuff and they'll be like, we're donating it to the Two-Legged Dog Society. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You are just bla you are just like, uh, it is helping to send those two kids to yeah. college. That's right. Oh, look at this, look at this what photo this? up here. This is a, a duck sitting on my legs watching um, 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> You're, 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 you're teaching your ducks early about good television. Uh -huh, they love it. Uh huh. They Follow it. Christopher on social media. Just search for Schmistopher. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back. It is time. To meet our next JVIP today, it's Deborah Combs from St. Bonifacius in Minnesota. She says our show is a bright spot in her morning, putting a positive spin on the day. Deborah calls Kendall and I a zany pair. I like that. That's a that's a classic word. I like that. She identifies with me because she too loves the 80s. Deborah's going to get a Jason Show mug and enter to win the monthly grand prize that includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World, and a $150 gift card to the Institute of Advanced Aesthetics. Dear friends, we'll be back to wrap things up right after this. the famous Julie and the famous Kelly. Go visit them at Hollywood Studios. It's time for the surprise goodbye. We don't know what's in this segment until we read it live right now. Just when you thought you'd seen everything. A biker in New York City is turning heads for what he's balancing on his head. Let's watch this. Hey, man. That is in a 45 inch. That's a 45 inch TV? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's right, it's a real 45 inch TV. Balance on the top of his head. The video was recorded in Brooklyn. Later in, the, later in the video, he stands up on the bike with the TV still on his head. Oh my word. Some people are questioning though, if it's actually a real TV. I think it is. Look, the way you can't. There, it's a skill. Look at, he is. Yeah, that's a real TV. Oh my gosh, my neck hurts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is great. Wow. That is great. Well, tomorrow on the show, <laughs> Stephanie Hansen is back making a salad and cocktail with watermelon. Plus, we're reading. Now, 
you got to watch tomorrow because we are reading. We received thousands of comments on YouTube from last week's uh, last week's snake segment. 98% of them have no idea who we are. No. They are the best comments we've ever received. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> who are these two?